This is a new film from Ridley Scott, which is adapted from a biography of the oil tycoon J. Paul Getty called Painfully Rich, but it zeroes in on a specific event in his life, uh, which was in 1973, the kidnapping of his grandson, John Paul Getty III, um, by Italian mobsters when he was wandering around Rome one night. Uh, they basically took him off to some uh, secret location and ransomed him for $17 million. And Getty, at the time, being the richest man in the world, was, uh, you know, you can understand the rationale behind that. You know, you just take this kid, he's going to cough up the money with no questions asked. However, Getty, uh, in, who's in the film, was played by Christopher Plummer, uh, did not do that. He actually refused point blank to pay a penny of ransom and would not negotiate, which uh, completely blindsided both his family and the kidnappers themselves. And so the whole event descended into a kind of a grand guignol chaotic farce. And we have this, this great scene where Getty sets out his uh, his rationale behind this uh, to his longtime fixer, Fletcher Chase, who's played by Mark Wahlberg, and it's in this clip. They will do things to Paul that cannot be undone for any amount of money. We have to pay. This simply isn't possible. My financial position has changed. Really? I mean, 30 seconds ago, you said it was a good day. I mean, I'm not all that bright, but I can multiply as well as you. With oil up as much as it was this morning, you have amassed another fortune. Well, what if the embargo is lifted and oil were to crash, I'd be exposed. I have never been more vulnerable financially than I am right now. Mr. Getty, with all due respect, nobody has ever been richer than you are at this moment. I have no money to spare. What would it take? I mean, what would it take for you to feel secure? More. So this great sinister operatic uh, sensibility that Ridley Scott does so incredibly well. In light of this decision by Getty, uh, John Paul's mother, Gail Harris, who's played by Michelle Williams, has to collaborate with the Italian police to try and track down where on earth her son is and set up some kind of bargaining dialogue with the, uh, with the kidnappers. Also, Fletcher Chase, Mark Wahlberg's character, is being asked by Getty to sort of sniff around and work out what's going on as well. And the theme of the film that underpins it all is what is the connection between uh, money, can you put a monetary value on a single life? And if you refuse to do it despite having so much money in the same way that Getty did, 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 what does that say about you and what does it say about money and the, the influence that money has over how a person lives their life? Um, now, there are two separate ways to review this film and you can take into account uh, the way in which it was made and then very quickly remade, or you can just look at it um, as, as, as a finished product. I think it's, it's, it's worth going the, the first route because you get, I think, a, a much sharper appreciation for what actually Ridley Scott and particularly Christopher Plummer achieved. The film was basically finished back in September of last year um, and Kevin Spacey had shot the role uh, of, of J. Paul Getty under heavy prosthetics and uh, old age makeup you know, had, had taken him to, to his 80s. And then, of course, the allegations of sexual harassment and sexual assault came out against Kevin Spacey. And Ridley Scott, under his instigation, said, OK, rather than have this film shelved and have the hard work of hundreds of collaborators, cast members, craftspeople effectively go to waste, because I, I think, in fact, he said in a, an interview this morning, he basically realised the film had become unreleasable. He was going to in the six weeks before the film's release, he was going to recast the role of Getty. He was going to reshoot all of Getty's scenes with the original cast in place, uh, the, the other original cast members, rather. He was then going to re-edit those scenes back into the finished film. And then this was all going to be fine for a late December release in the States and then obviously early January release in, uh, in the UK. Now, I don't think there's any precedent for this in the history of filmmaking, to have turned around an alter a completely alternative cut of the film in such a short time. And I should say, the role of Getty is not a small one. Christopher Plummer is in this film a lot, and it is his, uh, his, his character's journey, or arguably lack of journey, that underpins the entire thing. So this is not a decision that has been taken lightly. It's not just dropping in a funny little cameo for an actor friend who, and, and in fact, Ridley Scott wanted Christopher Plummer to play the role in the first place before I think the studio convinced him, no, you go with a bigger name and this will help get people in to see the, the, the film. So it's not just a favour. This is a complete, you know, basically ground level reworking of the film. Now, it's pointless to go into all the money in the world and look for the joins because there aren't any. I mean, the, the way this has been achieved, the, the seamlessness with which it's been put, re reassembled 
is is incredible to me. But it's almost it's worth knowing this in the same way that when you went to see The Revenant, it was worth knowing about all the onset, you know, flying up to the mountains in a helicopter at four in the morning, uh, the raw bison liver, bloody bloody blah, blah. Because when you went to see The Revenant, a part of you was going to see the making of The Revenant to see how on earth they'd achieved what they'd achieved out in the wilderness. And in the same way, for me, all the money in the world, you're marvelling at Ridley Scott's uh, determination as a filmmaker, his incredible efficiency, the way in which he can restage some incredibly dramatically complex scenes with an actor who had four days to prepare for this role between taking the call from Ridley Scott saying, will you do it? And then being on set. And then a nine day shoot, I think he was flown around between uh, England and Italy back and forth in a private jet to make sure they could do the location shootings with the rest of the cast in, in, in position. So they're not just, you know, matching up eye lines with this kind of invisible CG character. And the fact it's come together as seamlessly as it has done is to me completely amazing. And what Plummer achieves with the character, uh, particularly, you know, whether he had, you know, four days to prepare for this or four months is amazing because he is one of these Ridley Scott powerful white men that he just specialises in, like Peter Wayland in Prometheus and Alien Covenant, and like Terrell in the original Blade Runner as well. He is someone who has accrued so much power and influence in his life that it kind of lets him see through how society works and understand the, the mechanisms behind society in a different way than would ever occur to, to, to you or I. So his, one of his stated rationales for not paying the ransom is that he basically doesn't want to create a market for ransoms because this is, you know, he understands the world in, in terms of money flowing through it. And if he did that, his 14 other grandchildren would all be immediately kidnapped as well. Now, that's not a thought that would have ever occurred to me in that position, I don't think. But Plummer just puts enough humanity, and I mean, it is a kind of a an expert chef-like sprinkling, seasoning of humanity into this monstrous character to make you see... Oh yeah, okay. So this is how this is how he's thinking about the world. This is how he understands it, and this is why he's he's acting in the way that he is. Um, it's not the only good performance in the film by by a long stretch. I think you know Mark Wahlberg does the things that Mark Wahlberg does well throughout the film, which is great. Michelle Williams as, as the mother is terrific. She does this wonderful kind of strange mid Atlantic inflection in her in her voice uh, because she is basically living without the Getty riches. And Charlie Plummer, who's no relation to Christopher Plummer, but who plays the young John Paul Getty III, the kidnap uh, victim, um, is tremendous. He's in a film, the new Andrew Haig film, Lean on Pete, uh, you, you know, the director of 45 Years um, and Weekend. Uh, that film, I think, is coming out later this year and is, is really, really good. It's, it's a great sort of young star making performance for him, but he's terrific in this as well. Um, and so you've got this kidnap thriller attached to this fascinating character study. And both parts work beautifully, regardless of how long it took to assemble and pull apart and build back up.